calls are growing for government to intervene and legalize or decriminalize, I should say, sex work in South Africa following the discovery of six bodies believed to have been those of sex workers in the Joburg CBD over the weekend. A 20-year-old man has appeared in court in the last 24 hours charged with one of those murders. We can speak now to the Gauteng Social Development MEC in Bali Flope, who's with me in studio, thankfully, not having to do battle with a terrible phone line. Thank you for coming in, MEC. Uh, what are you able to do in the situation, if anything at all? You know, like you were saying, there, there is that growing demand for the calls, um, that the, this is a matter that needs to be looked into. And of course, we take national guidance um, as it pertains to its legalization or thereof. But what I can indicate is that a lot of what the sex workers struggle under is GBV. Um, you'll know that it has grown in the country and we would have seen escalating and quite horrific cases that would have taken place even during the COVID pandemic. So when there are cases of GPV, individuals can be able to report uh, to our various facilities. As you do know that we do work with NGOs, we also have our own facilities throughout the, the province where they can be able to report. And we do make sure that we provide shelters where women can be protected. And with, within these shelters, they're able to get not only just the, the shelter and the care that would be there, but they are also provided with skills and also access to legal services, preparation for courts, and so forth and so forth. So there are quite a number of initiatives that are there, particularly for the safekeeping of women. You'll know that President has pronounced this as a pandemic. So would decriminalization allow you as social development to become more active in, more, in a more focused way, shall we say, in assisting sex workers? You know, it, is, it continues to be that discussion, like you're saying. I mean, we obviously have these meetings that we call the MINMAC, where the various MECs throughout the country will sit together with the minister, and we discuss what are the pertinent issues that need to be looked into. Mm. And when you talk about gender rights and the ability for women to have a choice as to what it is that they want to do with themselves, their bodies, or whatever uh, career path they seek to follow, it is one of the discussions that certainly will be quite an apex priority for one of the discussions that we have in the MinMax. And the other issue that activists have said is, is that we need to decriminalize sex work as a country because it will also eliminate, for example, the pimping out of women uh, by people who then keep them drugged up in order to make sure that they're able to make them work for their benefit and basically strip them of their rights even further. And the Gauteng government has said it's on a mission, isn't it, to yeah. basically rid the streets mm. of drugs and make sure that people who become addicted, perhaps in this instance, having been forced, forced into a brothel, are assisted. Absolutely. I mean, as you know, we, our premier has come on quite strongly against substance abuse. But it's not just about the individuals that use the substances, but it's about those that perpetrate these. These are the sellers. And like you're saying, with regulation and greater regulation that is placed in there, we're able to make sure that we're, we're able to play a much closer focus and really zoom into the issue at hand mm. and make sure that you don't have indiv individuals that are able to hide under the fact that, you know, there's murky waters and they know that they can be able to continue to subject unnecessarily and, for and unfortunately individuals, whether they are sex workers, young kids and so forth, and, and they take advantage of their circumstances because we know that a lot of the people and who get into certain career paths or even get into substances is really out of a desperate situation that they're in, born out of their socioeconomic standing. And I don't want to generalize here, but on the point that you were making about um, economic circumstances uh, and the challenges that some people face, which may even lead them into sex work, that speaks to the urgent need, isn't it, to repair, restore the economy and make sure that when people are out of work or come from families that are struggling, there are other options for those who are forced by economic circumstances to go that way. Absolutely. And you know, just economic emancipation is a big thing, um, especially for us, because we understand that it's the only way that people can be able to really self-actualize. When you talk about people being able to experience the highest expression of themselves, it's about government making sure that they are an enabling environment for them to be able to do so. And then how thing is, you know, I mean, our premier came out quite strongly that part of the things that we need to focus on is how do we make sure that we alleviate even just issues around hunger that people may go through and how do the different departments that we have work together. We have a, a what I would say is a panel where we look at the war on poverty. And part of the things that it looks into is how do we create jobs outside of just dealing with hunger and how do we make sure that we have the various opportunities like in our Department of Social Development and Agriculture and, and the facilities that we have and programs that we have outside of just dealing with 
issues around hunger and making sure that people are able to be fed on a daily basis, how do we make sure that they're able to sustain themselves? Because we don't want to give handouts. We really want to give handouts. So, um, I'm going back to the point about the, the sex workers in the CBD, I mean, uh, we were out there on Monday speaking to some of, of their women, and they were saying, for example, there's an under-reporting of the crimes that they suffer, even when their colleagues, their friends, started to disappear. Uh, they were reluctant to report because police don't take them seriously, or police themselves abuse them precisely because they are sex workers. I wonder if their interaction with an official from social development would be any different. Uh, would they be protected? Would they be treated with respect? Absolutely. They certainly would. And I can tell you that, I mean, in our case, the MEC for Community Safety is female. Um, and she's an activist, an agenda activist at that, quite prominent in the work that she's doing in that space. So, and one of the things that she is looking into is how women get treated as they report these various crimes that they go through. And it's about making sure that we create an environment where they can feel safe. Because, I mean, you can imagine the, hor the horror. If you are raped and you've already been, um, gone through that horrific experience and then you're subjected to a secondary experience where the police don't take you seriously or they subject you to even further abuse. It's not something that we want and that's not the type of state that we seek to create. So there certainly are, I mean, we are quite awake and like I say, the MEC for, for Community Safety does do a lot of work in that regard. But as far as our department is concerned, our officials are the same way. I mean, we work with professionals who understand, who've been trained, these are social workers who know how to care for victims and understand that they need to protect them, they need to create a comfortable enough environment for them to be able to open up, because they could be going through a variety of issues and that, that needs to be dealt with. And that's why I was saying earlier that the shelters that we have, particularly for women and children, mm. we make sure that there's a lot of care that is given in dealing with the issues that they, they need to address. And but when also they're there, they won't be arrested because they're involved with sex work. Well, certainly, and we also make sure that they have a provision and have access to legal services. And in the case of individuals, whether you're a sex worker or you're not, people can get raped. And we do know that there are many cases of individuals who do get raped, uh, whether they're doing sex work, etc. And that still needs to be dealt with. And it can't be undermined because of the nature of work that they end. So they are, they are provided with legal services and also prepared for court cases okay. that they need to undergo. Let me see, Mbali Shopper. Good to have you, Sam. Thank you.